1995, Studio Ghibli released one of their most treasured films, Whisper of the Heart, the story of inspired youths fighting against the obstacles of the real world in order to achieve their dreams. The film marked the directorial debut of animator Yoshofumi Kondo and received critical praise, becoming the highest grossing Japanese film on the domestic market that year. Then one day, in 1999, Studio Ghibli received a proposal from a Japanese theme park about making a 20-minute short starring cats. Hayao Miyazaki liked the idea, but before moving forward with the project, he wanted three elements to be included. Two cats and a mysterious antique shop. It was clear that Miyazaki had Whisper of the Heart on the mind. One of the main settings of the film was an old antique shop, which also served as the home for two already established cats. The Baron, an antique statue with a mysterious past, and a real-life stray cat named Muta. Miyazaki also contacted Aoi Haragi, the author of the original Whisper of the Heart manga, and asked her to develop a spin-off plot for them using her original characters. The protagonist of Whisper, Shizuku Tsukushima, was an aspiring writer. Why not make this brand new story one that the character would write later on? The story eventually would be published as its own manga in 2002, just a few months before the film, titled Baron, The Cat Returns. Unfortunately, Ghibli's deal with the theme park was eventually scrapped but both Miyazaki and Haragi saw this as an opportunity to extend their 20-minute restriction. Miyazaki and fellow Ghibli co-founder Isao Takahata both turned down the opportunity to direct the film. Up until that point, both men had helmed the majority of Ghibli's film library. The only theatrical film not directed by either of the two was, ironically, Whisper of the Heart. Ocean Waves doesn't count. That debuted on TV first. But unfortunately, Whisper's director, Yoshifumi Kondo, passed away in early 1998 due to overwork. Miyazaki and Takahata were getting older too, so they needed to get some fresh blood into the director's chairs or fear the fate of the studio surviving on their shoulders and shutting down once they were gone. Plus, this cat film, which they had titled The Cat Project, seemed like a good starting point for a rookie director. So, the two men searched their staff to find someone capable of handling the task. Finally, they laid eyes on Hiroyuki Morita. Morita had been working in animation since the late 80s, starting out as an assistant on the groundbreaking film Akira. He would later go on to animate several other well-received films, like Perfect Blue and Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence. He was also an in-betweener on Kiki's Delivery Service. Morita's work ethic impressed Takahata especially, while working on My Neighbors the Yamadas. So, both Miyazaki and Takahata felt that Morita was the most logical choice to direct the Cat Project. Morita accepted the job, and within nine months had drafted a 525-page storyboard treatment. The Cat Project was originally meant to be a straight-to-video release. But producer Toshio Suzuki was so impressed by the storyboards that he inquired to Miyazaki about giving the film a theatrical release instead. When Miyazaki asked him why, Suzuki explained that it was because of the lead character. She was so fleshed out that it felt like you would have known her your whole life. That explanation was all Miyazaki needed to hear, and he agreed to release the film in cinemas. The Cat Returns was released in the summer of 2002 and focuses on the character of Haru, voiced by Anne Hathaway in the 2005 English dub. Haru is an insecure schoolgirl who is down on her luck. Things start to change, however, when she rescues a cat from being run over by a truck. But this is not just any cat. This is a talking cat. And not just any talking cat. The Prince of the Cat Kingdom. Later, the Cat King, voiced by Tim Curry, wishes to show his gratitude to Haru and arranges for her to marry his son. Not fond of the idea of marrying a cat, Haru seeks out the Baron, voiced again by Carrie Elways, in the hopes that he can help her out of her dilemma. I first saw this movie with a friend of mine for Ghibli Fest in 2018, and we had a blast. I was so amazed by how much I enjoyed it, and often when that happens, 
I question on whether or not it will hold up in a second viewing. And after watching it again for this review, it definitely did. From the very first scene, I had a smile on my face from start to finish. It was just so fun and pretty hilarious. If you're expecting an actual sequel to Whisper of the Heart, that's not what this is. There is no mention of Shizuku or Seiji or any other characters from the movie. The only connections are the return of the Baron and Muta, voiced by the late Peter Boyle. He's my favorite character, and I have to say, it's a pretty fitting role for Peter Boyle. Cranky, but still funny. No one's impressed with your cheesy light show, okay? You're hearing voices? Check yourself into a loony bin. Whose idea was it to leave without me? I nearly got killed! The one common complaint I hear about this movie is the casting of Andy Richter as the voice of Natoru, even though the facial features of the character are clearly meant to be female. And that's a fair argument. But honestly, I'm not really bothered by it as much as many others. My main issue is the quality of the film. It does have a straight-to-video vibe to it, especially in the animation itself. It's not bad, it's just... By Ghibli standards, this feels like a step backwards. Very two-dimensional and flat. When I think of Studio Ghibli, I think of the best of the best, pushing the boundaries of what the industry is capable of and giving us all sorts of unique movement and angles that you don't really see any other animation studio doing. But I get over my problems pretty fast once the cats were introduced. Another issue I have is not the movie's fault. It's just a complaint in general. The Disney dubs of these movies have recycled many of the same voice actors throughout productions. Why didn't they use Tim Curry more often? Wouldn't it have been cool to hear his voice come out of Muska from Castle in the Sky? Or Kurotawa from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind? Not that Mark Hamill and Chris Sarandon don't do a good job. My point is, I'm sure they could have found another role for Tim Curry somewhere. I was also surprised by the runtime. The film is only an hour and 15 minutes long, making it the shortest Ghibli film in existence. Compared to the rest of Ghibli's movies, that actually feels a little refreshing. It just delivers what it promises and doesn't overstay its welcome. The Cat Returns was a critical success when it first came out, but for some strange reason, Hiroyuki Morita hasn't directed a movie since. And there are very vague theories as to why, at least online. He seems to still be working in the industry today, but many fans have pondered why he hasn't sat in the director's chair again. The Cat Returns was the very first Ghibli film to be released right after Miyazaki's groundbreaking Spirited Away. Could it be that seeing the standard of what he had to live up to, Morita was too intimidated to direct again? Or... Could it be possible that he just decided that directing wasn't for him? I don't know. There are many theories out there, and we don't know what the future holds. But all that aside, The Cat Returns is an enjoyable film, and I definitely recommend it. I'm going to give The Cat Returns four and a half stars. Guys, thank you so much for continuing to watch my videos. It really means a lot to me. And stay tuned for my next Ghibli review next month for the critically acclaimed Grave of the Fireflies. And if you like this, you can click here and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.